All right, everyone. So for the last week of the class, we still have a few things we want to do with our app. Um, and uh, when we last, last left last time, we were um, adding some new sharing features to our app. We added the email feature. I said a moment ago that uh, I figured out what had happened with mine. Remember, I was running mine. It didn't want to work. I saw the button, but it didn't work. And that was the old working with the wrong folder problem. I was in Notepad editing one project, but then I was in the command prompt running, <coughs> running a different project. So no wonder it didn't work. Uh, I was in the wrong folder. So after I realized that and I ran it with no changes, it worked. Um, my version of the code from that time, if you want it, is in the network folder. But again, I highly recommend by now you're using your project because it's your project. You won't be able to upload my project because it's got my uh, package ID. But if you look in the Campos Android 3 folder, there's the 421 uh, project. And if you want a copy of it, you can get that. Or maybe just go in and get the specific files that you need. You know, get the JavaScript file or that sort of thing instead of taking the whole thing because my config XML file is set to me as as the developer. What's that? It could if you forget to if you don't if you don't edit your config file and forget to change it and you try to upload it, Amazon will say that already exists. Yes, you can. You can still modify it. So speaking of Amazon, I'm going to take a quick look over here on Amazon.com. Uh, I'm not logged in or anything. I just went to Amazon.com. I'm going to search for my SDCE just to show you this. Uh, and it pulls up everything on Amazon with that keyword, and that's our app right there. So it's showing previous semesters, May 2015, November 2015, April 21st, 2016. Uh, I'm just going to put this over on newest arrival, sort by newest arrival, and then here's a few of you guys that managed to go all the way. So we've got one, two, three, four, uh, and then nine. <coughs> so everyone uh, that tried to do it should have worked for them. So it's a real listing on Amazon, vis visible on all you know 220 countries that Amazon can reach. Uh, it's not exactly localized for all of those countries. You know, if you try to download it from Uzbekistan, it's still going to be in English. Uh, you know, we never translated it. Um, there is a Cordova plugin for that. Local, it's called uh, Globalization, I believe. Uh, but I'm going to take a quick look at my own project. Notice I'm using all of these fake names and just making up emails and all of that. And to a large degree, it doesn't matter because I call this Smith my SDCE, but the package ID was something else. I made up Kanjiwaru or something. So I made that up. They don't, I'm showing you here that they don't have to technically match. This title that appears here and the package ID, in my case, is different. And I've got Victor Apps at Net LLC. That's a completely fake account as well. So they let me do that. If I see the listing of my particular app, you know, there's my app icons, there's my screenshots, very nice. Uh, I've got a link to my own developer's account. There's only one app under this developer's account. Uh, rated. Guidance suggested. What is that saying? It's all ages. Guidance suggested. Based on the information provided by the developer, the content of this app has material that is appropriate for most users. The app may include account creation, location detection, etc. So when we had selected, when we had created our app and we selected, yes, it does ask for your location, and yes, you do create content, user content, it puts that up right there, guidance suggested. Someone is able to review this. So someone can go to this Amazon uh, product and go in there and give it five stars and a great review. Free to download, sold by Amazon, available instantly. Uh, other basic details, originally released April 22nd, and so forth. More apps from this developer. Here's these product features, these bullet points that, that we wrote. Full customization, interactive navigation, etc. There's a description there where I could have written 4,000 characters. <coughs> Technical details of it. It's 1.1 megabytes version 1. whatever, which is what we made. 
link to the privacy policy. That's that link to that address that I, that I said, you know, it's, uh, if you collect data, it's good to link to a privacy policy. And then here's something. Uh, here's something that we didn't address last time that is a big concern that we will address this time. A long time ago, last month, when we started this whole process of working with TACO, we did a command early on, which was TACO plugin add. And we added about 18 or so plugins. And we needed those plugins, for example, for uh, the GPS of the app and the camera and that sort of thing. Uh, and we requested permission from a user's device for all of those features, all 19 of those basic features. Our app does not require most of those features. And so if someone looks at this app and they say, this app is going to read my call log and look at open network sockets and write to my external store and record my audio, what is this app going to do without, without me noticing? So we have requested all the permissions just so that we can work with TACO quickly. But we need to remove the extraneous permissions, especially the ones that make no sense and sound scary, like um, B from external storage. It's going to look at this app. Why is this app going to look at my memory card? What's it going to spy on me about? <coughs> so we need to uh, deactivate several plugins a little bit later, once we're done with our other bits of code. So the, the moral of this, the moral of this story is only activate the plugins that your app needs. Because if you've got more than that, some of them sound scary, and then they could, uh, it could be a detriment to people downloading your app. So we'll get to that a little later. Uh, minimum operating system, downloads in less than 30 seconds, etc. So it's a fully accessible app from the Amazon App Store. Oh, and I uploaded the video too, so it says watch video. Hey everyone, this is my amazing app so for yes, my SDCE. That quick video this that I recorded has from everything uh, that you need um, to enroll in classes at Team Viewer Continuing slash Education and to save uh, your class broadcaster. Download so today. A little video on how the app works, and I'm narrating. So we need to upload a version 2 of this, and that's what we're working on now. So we'll get that into that now, but any general questions at this point? The, yes. Uh, the app is, uh, other than what we did on this term, was that done in the previous couple of months, or was that done in the previous course? These are previous courses. So if I just do a quick search for that keyword, put it on order of the date. I'll go back. I'll go back several screens. This is going all the way back to August 2014. So, um, uh, yeah. people's, people's apps are still there from when they built them a while ago. And how long do you keep your videos up? Uh, I would keep them up just as long as the app is up. If I change the app, the interface, the design and such, then the app video doesn't match anymore. So in that case, I might remove it or shoot a new one. But I would, I would keep the video up as long as possible. After all, Amazon is storing it, not me or on my own personal hosting. And Amazon, for all intents and purposes, have um, infinite space. So I'll just uh, keep it up there. Oh, those videos, I see. Sorry, the class videos you're saying. Sorry, I thought you meant the, the video of the app. The class videos, yeah, those are also, I'm going to leave them up there. I'm not going to remove them uh, from YouTube. You can go back to that channel and just keep going back. Uh, they'll always be there. Uh, I'm not planning on removing them because YouTube also has, for all intents and purposes, infinite storage. So I'm just going to leave them. You just have to find them because I'm going to keep adding new ones and they'll get pushed down. All right, so let's get back to working with our code. I'm going to go back to my flash drive where I've got my project. And we were editing the... Uh, we're going to open both the HTML and the JavaScript files. 
Let's go ahead and open those. And I'll also open a taco window. I know that's not what it's called, but I'm going to open a command prompt window. Um, so I'm ready with that. So I've got my index file and the uh, Cordova JS file. And so where we left off, we had the button in the line 256. We created a button to click that to send an email. The button itself on the HTML screen is easy. And then over on the JavaScript near the bottom somewhere uh, at about line 152, about line 50, uh, 152, we've got the actual code that makes that work. There's our onClick event handler, function email us, and uh, we went through all of that, how that works, and it does. Uh, again, I was opening the wrong version of my code. I'm going to add we're going to add more code in just a moment, and I just pulled it up quickly here in my browser. Uh, it would be better to load it in the device, but there's the about screen, and then contact us, uh, and so the web browser is not going to be too much of a use. Uh, you do want to check it on the device, and a couple of people did tell me that they got theirs to work, and I got mine to work because I was working with the wrong code. So, I want to add another, another button. This one is for sharing the app itself. Right now, this is contact us, in that a person clicks the button to contact us, the developer. Maybe we should call it contact developer, to make it obvious that when you click that, it's going to send an email to the developer, you know, with uh, maybe a tech support question, or kudos, or whatever. So that's the purpose of that button. I want to make another button where uh, this is such an amazing app, clearly, that I want people to share this app to more people. I want more people to uh, download this app. I want people to tell their friends and family on Facebook or on Twitter or on um, WhatsApp and so forth. I want them to be able to share it to their friends and family. The same plugin will let us do that. It's just that it needs uh, different code. Uh, to remind ourselves, in uh, I'm going to go to the web browser, do a quick search here. Uh, social sharing uh, Cordova. Social sharing phone gap. Social Sharing Cordova, either or. Uh, it should give the result from Eddie Verbruggen, that's the developer that made this plugin that we're using. Social Sharing Cordova was my search term, and it should take you to the GitHub page. I'm just going to take a quick look at what I'm about to do, then we'll write the code. Um, what I want to do is, we have different ways to use it for iOS and Android. Uh, using the share sheet, share directly to, etc. Yes? Yeah, they're pretty much synonymous. If people installed, uh, back when they set up uh, Node, and they did npm install. Remember, we did npm install taco. Uh, the alternative is npm install PhoneGap or npm install <coughs> Cordova. So all three of those are synonymous. Taco, Cordova, PhoneGap. Uh, 
basically. There was another couple of you that you listed in this book. Yeah. A couple of other frameworks? Yeah. There are, definitely. What are the ones listed there, if you can find them? Accelerator and titanium. Yeah, those are those are a couple of other ones. Um, different ways to accomplish the same thing because uh, everyone uh, wants to to crack this nut. How do you uh, make uh, mobile apps for all the platforms quickly? Um, that's the whole purpose of this class. One code base for everything. And so Accelerator and Titanium and such are, have their own versions. I haven't used them myself, but I know that they have uh, some some good. Um, you know, uh, good feedback and usage. So I'm looking at the <coughs> the different ways that we can do this. Of course, the documentation is pretty uh, feature rich. I just noticed the there's different ways to do it. We can share directly to Twitter, Instagram, and, and so forth. So for example, uh, let's say we had some sort of app where we wanted to share a photo to Instagram. This plugin opens up the ability to share to these. It doesn't do it directly. For example, Instagram, uh, it's still going to open Instagram and load up the sharing screen in Instagram. It's not going to share directly to Instagram. Oftentimes you can't quite do that because these apps um, don't allow it. These apps say you have to use our app to share to our network. Uh, some apps do let you share directly from your app, but some of them, they have to be the middleman. So what I want to do is add the ability for people to choose where they're going to share to. Let's get back to our index file and let's create a button to make this work. For the moment, we'll just add it right after the previous email button. Let's go back to the HTML and on line 257 we will write, um, we'll just say uh, share app. This is our button to share the app. It needs the A tag. It's going to be a link just like line 256. It needs an href to a dummy location. It needs a data roll button. Data icon. There's an icon in there. I forget what it's called at the moment, but it's like a little arrow jumping out of a box to share. I think it might be called action. If it doesn't work, it'll just be empty. We'll figure that out later. This needs an ID. I'll call it BTN share. So remember, of course, IDs are unique throughout the whole project. If you had two different screens, an about screen, and a computer screen, computer classes screen. And you try to use ID button share both of those times, it would not work. Because IDs can only be used once. In that case, perhaps the class would be better. Class equals BTN share. We'd have to change our code accordingly. But we've been setting this up so that one button in our whole project has that particular ID. Now I have a new button. <coughs> Let me confirm that's the right icon. Yeah, share app. So it's the action button. Data icon action. So we've got a button, we've got a trigger in the HTML file. I'm going to save that and switch over to the JavaScript file. 
before I write the code for that, I want to add a comment here. Remember, we're going to lose track of what our code is. So on line uh, 164, I'm going to add end, comment add, uh, comment end email us function. I'm just marking here that's the end of my email function. We're going to create a new button trigger and a new function right after this. Not before the end of the on device ready. Be careful there. Line 165. We're going to create the jQuery selector code. We've got BTN share. dot on click function we will define a function in a moment that should look familiar that's exactly what we did a few lines above and what we've been doing over and over every time we want some sort of button to be active and let's say we're going to create a, a share app function we're going to call a share app function once that button is clicked. Therefore, we need to define what it does on the next line. Function share app. Before I forget, I'll write there end share app. There should be, but I'm about to forget. Mm -hmm. I, want, uh, I don't want the team to think that suddenly no one came anymore. Just to remember. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll uh, define this. This is going to be very similar to what we did. Uh, back on line uh, 154, it's this. It, it's the same plugin that also gives us this ability to share to other networks. We set this up as share via email, so it's specifying to send this via email. We want to set it up so the person can choose what network they want. So we'll do it this way first. Uh, inside the share app function, we'll write we'll write window window dot plugins plugins that's plural dot social sharing now oftentimes you are seeing that um, when you've got social sharing uh, like this the second word is often capitalized but for whatever reason this developer didn't capitalize the second s in social sharing that's how that was set up so you just have to remember that it's lowercase then we've got dot share, open close parentheses, end of line. So here is the more generic, let the person share. Let the person choose where they're sharing. And it will require various parameters just like we have there. So I'm going to break that into separate lines. That um, Those parentheses, I'm going to break those into a couple of lines there. We're going to need six parameters here. So remember how we set this up basically before. Within the share method, we're going to have null, and I'll explain what each of these are in a moment. Null, null, null. Six of them. <clears throat> I'm 
the last one does not have the comma. It's the last one in the series. So this share method takes six parameters, very similar to what we had up there. The first one is the message. I'm going to add a, a comment here, a single line comment, so that I uh, uh, give myself a note about what this is. This is the message that's going to be sent. The documentation also says, depending to which network you share to or how you share to, some of these will be ignored, and some of them will be used. Uh, for example, we've got message, then we've got subject. For example, there's no subject on a tweet, there's just the message. But over on Facebook, we can have, uh, we might have both. Um, so some are going to be used, some fields are going to be used, and some are not. And that's our, our problem with, well, uh, if, if I'm letting the person choose a network, how is this going to work? You're not going to be able to know unless you test it. For example, what about you downloading the, the various networks and testing it instead of relying on people doing it for you? We'll see that in a moment, of course. The next line here is you can attach, uh, you can attach a, um, an image or... Well, we'll just call it gener generically document, because that could be an image, a PDF, um, a file, etc. So, JPEG, P PDF. Just, this is the line to attach a document. This, of course, is going to vary depending on where you're sharing. So, most of the time, the document is going to be a graphic. You don't really share PDFs to directly to Twitter or to Facebook and such. It's mostly graphics. Um, if you think outside the box, in theory, we could also use this in our app coupled with the camera plugin. We take a photo. If the photo is successful, uh, run socialsharing.share and populate this line with the data of the photo. Either the raw data or the link to the photo on the memory card. So if you mix both of those plugins together, now you've got like a directly uh, shareable picture to a social network. Next line here is a link. So we can attach a link here. You often do that on social networks, don't you? You write a little text maybe, maybe add a picture and add a link so you can uh, go check out the latest funny cat picture, cat video. I can't attach, I don't think we can attach a video to this. We can try it, of course. But what we could do is we could instead attach a link to, to a video online and such. And these last ones are success and fail. All right, so it's very similar to what we did on the one above. Can you, can you say we are doing this? The person will be able to choose. Because we've said generically share, they will be able to choose. On top we had share via email where we specified how it's going to be shared. So, so when we had share via mail, notice it had the CC field, BCC, email, and so forth. And this is slightly different. What we're going to do to populate these parameters for message in quotes, because it's a string, we're going to say check out the MySDCE app. So imagine, this is going to be sent to Twitter or to Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And the message that will be shared on that tweet or that Instagram post will say, check out the MySDCE app. 
Depending on the network, it may or may not take the subject. So if you do use the subject, uh, some networks will use it, some networks won't. So you have to think about what you can write here that would not matter if it was sent to a network that didn't use it, and what we would write here to a network that did use it. Um, so just for example here, I've got my SDCE app download. If a particular network does allow that field, you'll have that text. If they don't allow that field, doesn't matter, they'll still get the gist of it with the rest of the parameters. I was going to say here, under the document, one more note here, must be an array. You have to put it in, uh, in, in uh, square brackets. And uh, I believe the documentation says we can attach more than one picture. But again, you don't want to, you don't, you don't upload multiple pictures to Instagram. Uh, you do to Twitter. You do to Facebook. So it's better to uh, have uh, one picture to be safe rather than multiple pictures. And you have to be careful about adding pictures here because if you're if this is on someone's phone and they don't have like an unlimited data plan or whatever, and you're attaching you know four pictures for them to share on social media, you're using up their data um, because it would it would send all four of those high quality pictures over to the network. So what this field will be, I'm going to borrow one of the pictures that's inside of our project. Uh, so let's add the square brackets, and inside the square brackets, quotes, and then we'll write a path to one of the pictures in our project. Uh, can we reuse the one up here? Images, programs. No, we're gonna. We have an icon for our project. We've got CE logo vert dot ping. So we're going to share this picture that's in our images folder. Remember, this has to be from the root of the project, not the root of the WW folder. So we have to include the WW folder in the path slash images forward slash is because it's it's web code rather than uh, code in command prompt which are backslashes it's forward slashes and then that particular graphic which is ce dash logo dash vert dash ping Why didn't you put that in brackets? the documentation says that you have to do it this way so when the developer created this he set it up that you can have multiple attachments here and therefore put them in an array so that you know we know that an array is, in a, is a collection of variables basically. So we're going to share one picture here. If you had two, would you put a comma into another quote or? Mm -hmm. Each one would be separated like that. So we would uh, we would separate them each one because each one technically we're writing this as a string because it's an object that's in our project but technically this would be a variable and that variable could hold something else so it has it is separated by commas and then quotes were appropriate usually it's quotes in our case link just to see how this is we're going to attach a link here also we're going to uh, send along a a link on our tweet let's say or our facebook post or our instagram post this one's also in quotes in our case because we're going to we're going to write you know a, a string a literal value here which again all of these could be variables if we set ourselves up with variables we can reference variables here without the quotes this one uh, might be a little tricky because what I want to do is I actually want to point this to the app on the App Store. Uh, so here's one possible way for you to, to do this. If you go to Amazon, 
Com. And if your app is live, we can get its code. If your app is not live, we can do this anyway. Let's try this. Let's take a quick segue over here to Amazon.com. At the top here, search my SDCE. Even if you didn't get your app up here, we'll borrow someone's. So I'm, I'm, I didn't specify any location, any department. I just searched my SDCE because my app has that. That whole search and discoverability, my app has that keyword. And uh, I'm going to change this on the top right corner to newest arrivals because it's also showing me older, older, older students' work. Newest arrivals. And if you see your app here, we're going to use it. If not, you can use mine. A link to my app. I did the one called Smith, my SDCD, Victor Apps. Click on that. And everything on Amazon, of course, has a link. We're going to take the link of this um, of this app and put it in in our in our app here. Uh, but I'm not going to take the address that's up here because it's full of it's often full of characters that that might cause problems, especially question marks and that sort of thing. Ampersands. So Amazon provides an alternative much more friendly kind of link to everything that they've got on Amazon. It's kind of hidden. But you can find it right here if you look if you click on share. It's very nondescript. It's saying share on Pinterest. Whatever. Click on the share button. And then that pops up this link right here. This short link which should only be full of simple characters, uppercase, lowercase numbers and such, not extra special symbols that often show up on the address bar from navigation, which could cause problems, perhaps. This is just going to be alphanumeric link. And this, everything has this alphanumeric link. It's always in that little share button. I'm going to take the link to my app. copy that and that's what I'm going to paste into my code and I would highly recommend you copy and paste not to write what I wrote because uh, from here I can't quite tell if that's a zero or a one yes so thank you Put it in there just like that. Will it open in a new app? Open the browser? I'm not exactly sure because it's going to depend on the device. Uh, we're going to test it right now in a moment on Android, and it may automatically open in the App Store, it may open a web browser, it may open an in app browser in the app. We'll, we'll see when we try it. Is there a way to control it if you want it to open within your app? Yes. Um, we have to um, specify the protocol. The protocol right here is HTTP, which is a website. We have different uh, protocols. Um, in the config XML file, we have these protocols. Um, ITMS colon to open it for you know the iTunes store. Over here somewhere for the Android store. Where did I see it? Android Mail to Geo. So we the short answer is we would have to look up what the protocol. Oh, here it is. It's market. Market colon and then the link to so, the app. So, so what I'm thinking is that the platforms seem to care about how long your users stay in your app, so if you can more things within your app, then you can get a yeah, especially if you're doing uh, maybe like affiliate marketing or, or apps, uh, ads, that might be that might be valuable to keep them in your app longer. Uh, but that's uh, unfortunately the problem about uh, their standards, but unfortunately the standards don't spread across every platform and such. So we have to look up what's the best way to do it for Android and what's the best way to do it for iPhone and then include 
possibilities. So I'm just going to, yes? If I were going to link to an audio file, MP3, then I would probably make it short. Hopefully I could upload the MP3 in another, with the, with the uh, hmm. like a living image, and then just link to it within the app. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we just have to balance uh, sound quality and file size if we're going to keep it in the app itself, because multimedia is always going to increase the size of our app pretty quickly. The alternative is to have it online somewhere and load it up as necessary. The downside of that, of course, is if they don't have an internet connection, you don't have the sound. If you wanted to stream, like have a variable in here that would just pick up something from the internet that you stream in mm -hmm. randomly, or could, could you set that up? You could. Um, that's, to some degree, uh, a bit of that code back when we worked on our first days of JSON, where we had that random graphic loading. Remember that was pulling that out of completely out of itself, out of that in, out of that HTML file. It was pulling um, the graphic and the the text out of a completely different place. So what I'm getting at is there's some code in there. I believe it's the XML HTTP request, something like that that kind of code is going to allow us to connect to some online resource and play the music from, from elsewhere. In attempting to do all of this, it may work, it may not work. So now we need to deal with this, with these callbacks. And the way we did it back here up on line 161 and 162, that was like the quick and dirty way at this point deal with it. This could be set up to be much more complex. Um, I'm going to do it this same way, but what I mean is we could set it up to be like this. Uh, bad result. So again, don't type this yet, but this could be set up to be then create a function called bad result and then define the bad result of the function. We're not going to do it that way, but we could do it, we could do it this way. Have a callback function named here and here and then define what it does, and notice no parentheses there. That's, uh, uh, that's, that's often standard there in, uh, in a callback situation, and I believe the documentation of this plugin says it the same way. If you're going to use a function here, don't do the parentheses. Yes? One question. When you got the link, how did you, how did you get the short link? Wherever you are at, at the um, at Amazon, uh, you want to click this nondescript little button that says share, ah, okay. and then you'll get that pop-up with the short link. So I'm just checking. I can't really see the share in the, uh, on the listing. It's it the might thing. depend. Open an actual project. You might not. You might not have opened an actual app. Just confirming here if that callback has parentheses or not. I'm pretty sure it does not, but I just want to triple check. Yeah. Um, on success callback, on error callback, optional error function, optional success function, no parentheses. So we're not going to do it this way, but I'm showing you if we wanted more complexity here, uh, we can have a fully defined function, which I misspoke, good result, this is a success, bad result, but this one's failed, so sorry, we you get the idea, success and fail callbacks. We're not going to do it this way, we're going to do it the same way that we did up here, the quick and dirty way, which might not be the best way, but this is all we needed for the moment. The same sort of thing, we'll, we'll, we'll write a function. Basically, I'm going to copy and paste that right above from up there, because it's, that's exactly what I want. I want it to, if I've got a problem, say something in the, call, in the console. If I've got a success, say something in the, in the console. So out of both of these, that's what I'm going to set up my... Um, that's what I'm going to replace those nulls there with.
And I believe that's all we need at this point. Uh, we want to save and test this and best on a real device or the virtual device. It'll work to some degree. But uh, I'm going to test this now on my real device here. Save all. Taco run Android. On my particular device here, I do have a bunch of social networks. Let's see which ones pop up. But I do have Twitter. I have Twitter, Snapchat, um, Instagram. So I'll, I'll show what that looks like in a moment. Let me run mine. So this feature here is becoming much more of a popular feature to add to your apps, the ability to do social sharing. You've got this app, but you want to also send some some of its data or contents over to to Facebook. People are using these networks a lot nowadays and not slowing down. So if you can figure out, is it useful for me to share to these networks somehow, then it would be a good idea to do so. I'm getting this random crash here for some reason, which happened previously, so I'm going to try the old plugging it and re-plugging it in. Trick. Everything is saved. Just for just to make sure I'm going to close it all. So you see if it doesn't work for you right away, it didn't work for me either, but I'm just going to try different things. Just to unplug everything and replug it in and see how that works. Gonna load up in just a moment. I hope. Did anyone uh, try yours, and did you get any result? The, right the button is back on the about screen. So this, of course, uh, the speed of this has to do with the um, um, with your particular device. It looks like it might. Oh, didn't work. Okay. Um, I think I don't this will help. But the code that you have from last Thursday night you posted. Mm -hmm. I tried to run that on this machine with my phone. That similar messages. I'm seeing something here that I saw with a couple of people. Key store file does not exist. It's asking me for a key store file, which I find odd because I haven't told it to use my key store file. So it's looking for my smith.jks key store file. Uh, I don't know if this is a bug or if something that we've done has alerted it that we need to build this that way. But what this is saying. For a couple of people, we, we got this problem and we fixed it. What this is saying is it's looking for the JKS file inside of my project. Now, it's also showing it very oddly here. For, for a couple of people, it said, uh, you know, the path was listed right here, and we put the JKS file where it's asking. But this path is very weird because it's saying dot dot slash. So if you count each one of these as going back up one level, this is one, two, three, four levels. One, two, three, four. It seems to be saying it, it's expecting the JKS file in my apps screen. 
So in my case, let me see if that fixes it. But again, this is very odd. I haven't seen this before where it's asking for, for my key store even though I did not write, even though I didn't give it the command to use it. So I'm just going to put that Smith file where it's asking for it. I'm not specifying to use it. Let's see what it does. Yeah, I've got all my apps here. I could leave it there and then just have that backed up and everything's convenient there. Worst case scenario, this will probably work here if I put it in the right place. Worst case scenario, um, I would uh, I would need to, because right now it's asking for my key store and I think I remember my password. But if I don't, worst case scenario, I create a brand new key store. I can go back to sheet number eight. I can create a brand new key store, and I can specify taco build Android release and force it to use my new key store in theory. But let's see what it does here. Key store file does not exist. I'm, I think I just put it in the wrong place. Because we've got one, two, three, four apps. Uh, I'm just going to go for broke. I'm going to also put it in the F drive. And I'm also going to put it in that app folder. It's in there somewhere. Okay, so I think it got it that time. It's just, it's wanting that, that key store file, even though I didn't specify it. And just to be safe, because again, that path looks weird, I put it also up on, just on my F drive. I think that's where I had it first. I moved it out of there earlier today when I was cleaning up my flash drive. So I had my key store on the F drive. So I put it back there, and again, I don't know why it's asking for it. I didn't specify anywhere. Maybe something was written somewhere in the project that now ex it expects it future times. And I believe we can override that by, you know, s setting up a new key store and telling it specifically, taco build, um, Android release, and point it to the, the JKS file. Mm, let me put it in there right now. 
that was that was my key store that I made up. So if it's missing, let me put it in the in the folder. It's it's not going to want it in the folder. However, it, it looks like it's going to want it in the flash drive, the F drive. But anyway, I'm going to put it there on the Z drive. Uh, I'm going to put it in the Android 3 folder. It's smith.jks, not in, the, in not in 421. It's just on the top. So if I use the desktop, uh, then I should put it on the desktop. Take a look at what your code is saying, because when mine was complaining, mine was saying right here, somewhere there you're going to see key store file does not exist, and it's going to tell you where it's looking for it. So try to put, try to put it where it seems to be telling you. Okay, so mine finally loaded up on my on my device and what I want to do here is to show you on my particular device uh, so hopefully this focuses okay so I've got it on my device I'm gonna go to the about I've got the brand new share button right there share app I'm gonna hit that and then see on my particular one it says if it focuses it says share with and I've got share on Bluetooth direct message via Twitter Gmail Google Plus Hangouts what else do I have uh, Instagram maps somehow share to the maps share to peach snapchat Sue tweet Twitter okay I'm gonna hit the Twitter one let's see what that one looks like so I hit tweet So I loaded up my Twitter account. Check out the My SDCE app with that link that I wrote, the picture that I attached, ready to tweet. I don't have to add anything else. I'll just go ahead and tweet it. So that's going to get sent over to my Twitter account. It sent it. It brought me back to the app. And probably if I look at the console, said something. <clears throat> Success faults. So it worked. We wrote it. So I'm seeing in the console success false. Result is false. If it didn't work, it would say fail and whatever that error was. So it's sort of a misnomer at this point, but I'm seeing the word success because I wrote success here if it worked. Whatever result that I'm getting out of the app that says false goes there, and I believe the documentation, uh, the developer said, depending on the device, you might get a zero or a one, a true or a false, but it's going to work. If it hit the, if it hit this line, it worked because it, that's the success callback line. I'm going to load it up right here. Uh, it's twitter.com slash vmcampus. I probably have embarrassing stuff there, so I should have thought about before uh, sharing it there. But twitter.com... I'm sharing it to my Twitter. And if it worked, I should see... Yep, right there. Check out my SDC app. Now, it's a... Uh, it's a, it's got a, it's a transparent graphics, which shows a little weird, but there's a text that I don't check out the MySDCP app. That's the message that I sent. There's the link that I attached. There's the picture that I attached. There's no subject, though. Twitter doesn't take a subject. So if I do click that, then it opens up directly back on Amazon.com. 
you know you can also check it out I, I've got a my my phone here I'm gonna load up that same tweet on on my phone and see what that looks like so on my phone I am seeing the same thing I'm gonna hit that link and I'm just expecting it to yeah it opened up a brand new window uh, a brand new browser window and it opened up um, Amazon and I've got the app on on Amazon so there you go, that's that's live it actually uh, tweeted it out there for real to Twitter So I clicked on um, I clicked on to share Instagram, but I'm going to cancel it to take me back to the app. I'll look at the console. I did that. So so this um, social sharing is working. So it works the best on a real device. Did anyone try it on a virtual device, maybe to see what that looks like? Question. So on a uh, virtual device, where do we see the lock at the end? Is it, where is it? Is there like a debugger? Yes, you're going to need to pull up. Uh, you're going to need to pull up Google Chrome again. Oh, from Chrome. Okay. From Chrome, we'll be able to see the um, the console or that monitor that we can pull up from the uh, from the SDK folder. I would just go with Chrome. There, I should run the app in the browser mode? No, go ahead and run it in the virtual device and then on Chrome, Chrome will see virtual devices. Remember, you go to developer tools under more tools, inspect devices, and it will see they will see virtual devices as well as real devices. You hit F12 to pull up the, de the, the developer tools and then click the three dots. I see. More tools, inspect devices, and you should see your virtual device listed. All right, so mine worked. Uh, let's uh, let's take our, our first break uh, to to regroup, uh, and then we'll write a little more code, and then we'll talk about uh, removing those extraneous plugins that are scaring people, and then re-upload our our app for version 2 and see what that process is like and then keep going.